had some good singing already this morning, right? Okay. We're going to be talking a little bit about inheritance today. Uh, you know, and I got a long history of good people in my inheritance. Did you know I even had a great, great grandfather? I don't know how many greats he was, but they were in Kentucky. His name was, now, you know, my last name's Onion. You know what his first name was? Moses. Well, you know, I was just thinking the other day, I was saying, you know, golly, I got teased so much in, you know, school, being Onion, you know, that you call me potatoes, carrots, and everything else you can think of. So I said, oh, you know, I wonder about old, old grandfather Moses. Oh, I bet he had trouble all the time. I just think a little story, and I said, I'll bet they teased him one time, says, when he's going to school or something, hey, Moses, did you park the creek coming to school today? <laughs> Moses just turned around and told him, says, well, I did park. I parted all weekend. I went in Mom's garden. I planted tomatoes over here. I parted the, the carrots over here and the lettuce over here. Anyway, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear loving Father, we just thank you for this beautiful day once again, and we just, we know it's yicky out there, but we, we're glad we can be here to, sh to listen to the word of God and what you laid on my heart and let the people listen. And uh, we just give you all the praise and the glory and be with the, our sick that are, especially Pastor and Linda, that they're doing through. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna go we're gonna do a little different here. We're gonna we're gonna read first the scripture. And the scripture is First Peter, we're gonna start in verse three. Praise to be God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, in his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into the living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into the inheritance that we can never perish, spoiled or fade. The inheritance is kept in heaven for, for you who through faith shielded by God's power unto the oncoming of salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In all this you greatly rejoice through now and for a little while you may have had to suffer griefs and all kinds of trials. These <clears throat> have come so the proven genuine of your faith are greater of great worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire. <clears throat> may result in praise, glory, and honor, and Jesus Christ is revealed. Through you have not seen him, you love him, and even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with the unexpectable and glorious joy, for you are received the end result of your faith the salvation of your soul. <clears throat> you know, inheritance is <clears throat> it's like <clears throat> a genetic kind of character. It's, it's something that you, you might get from your parents, your offsprings are, are taken correctly. You know, some of those things are a little bit different. So, uh, you know, you're not going to be just like your mother. You're not going to be just like your father, but you might have traits that your mother has traits. Now, I can see some traits in me from my mom and my dad, and I can see some traits in Mary from her mom and her dad, but it's not always the same. So, but just, re just remember, when you get older, you don't, want to, you don't want to be exactly like your mom and dad. You want to be a little different, okay? So, <laughs> yes. hey, huh? Yes. yes. And, and, and Mary always reminds me, says, don't let me be like my mother when I get older, you know? A little, but, you know, you can't help everything there is. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to read the verses just a little bit. I'm, we're going to go back to three here. Uh, here, right here at three, at, between three and five, what he's really talking about is Peter's talking about uh, uh, a doxology, they call it. But it's, what it, it, it's, it's by raising Jesus from the dead through which God gives Christians a new birth and eternal inheritance. So this is an inheritance that you get when you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Okay, on verse 4 it says, <clears throat> Keep in heaven. This inheritance guards heaven and such as it is untouched by troubles in life. Whatever happens, yes, yes. Whatever happens in your life, if you have Jesus Christ in here, you, there's nothing going to happen to that salvation. Never. I think some of us can slip and we can go a certain way, but you always have that salvation and God will bring you back. In five, in verse five, through faith are shielded by God's power. God himself not only keeps this inheritance, but also guards the for whom he prepared salvation for. So that's talking a little bit about future people. Uh, ours is guarded in our soul because it's there. But even the people that are going to accept Jesus Christ till the world ends are guard, his, their faith is guarded too just, just kind of remember that uh, he's preparing them for the salvation and number six suffering grief and all kinds of trials because there is new birth Christian believers are to have different values, uh, allergies, and privileges, these bring great joy, but also may cause believers to experience hardships within their society. Uh, th this, this society thing is, is like what we're going through today. Uh, I, just put a, I just put a ring on my door the other day, we, we had it, and, and my daughter gave it to us, and we figured it out how to do everything, and then all of a sudden, you have to join this neighborhood thing. And my goodness, man, I think I turned it on yesterday, and I bet I've had 15 burglaries and 15 car thefts and like this. They were supposed to be just in my neighborhood, but it's all over. And I'm getting out of ring, so I just turned on, you know, vibrate all the time. So, but the society is going crazy. They even had a picture I saw the, yesterday this, this, this man had his garage open, had his car parked right next to his garage, and this guy from the street just walked up the driveway, shook his car, it wasn't open, so he took, went up. I mean, that's totally getting crazy, this society. But we are here. We Christians are here. And we have to believe in God and let God take care of everything. But what is our job? Our job is to talk to people, smile to people, tell them about Jesus. You know, I, I like telling people about Jesus. You know, a lot, of, a lot of you, some people don't like talking about God. But us Christians, we must. Did you know that just your testimony sometimes, the right people, that you can start talking about God, just your let's say how you went to church or let's say you did it on the street let's say you did it in a restaurant or something somebody talked to you about it you start talking and some of those people just put their hands and say yeah yeah they will they will they'll start really really listening to you and then when you get into the word of God and they say can I join man I'll tell you what can, can, can I accept Jesus you tell them how to accept Jesus Woo! you feel like you want to pull out your spenders you know yeah, or something. But, but 
you know, leading somebody to the Lord is very, very great. Okay, this, in, in James, the verse in James is 1, chapter 1, verse 2 through 4. This is trials and tribulations. Consider it pure joy, my brother and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith proves presence. Let the presidents finish its work so that you may be mature and complete and not lacking anything. Nah. So I'm not lacking anything. I didn't, I didn't win the lotto. I didn't win that big million, big million. I'm lacking, Lord. No, you're not. I'm taking care of you. And you're in the way that I think you ought to be taken care of. Look to the Lord for guidance and strength. And back in Peter in 9, the salvation of our souls. Do not exclude the body, but refer to the whole body. So that, does that mean I have to take care of all my body? Yes, you do. You got Jesus in here until he tells you to sit down and not go anywhere and preach the word or tell somebody about Jesus. You got to keep going. You got to keep talking to those little boys and girls, your grandsons, your granddaughter. Why am I here for them? They got their mother and dads. Well, God has you here for a purpose. And your purpose is to, to bring joy to the rest of the world through Jesus Christ. And what is that? Salvation. Uh, I, uh, it just, it just, I just love talking to people about Christ. It just, it's, it's, a, it's a thing that I get all tickled about, I guess. But it's, it's very much fun to talk. But you, you're preaching the Word of God. And, you know, just, just kind of think back to when you first received Christ. Did you feel something special? Yeah, you did. You didn't know what it was. I know I didn't. I know what I did, but I didn't know that feeling. I remember it was, uh, you've heard my testimony somewhere there on Trudell Street. It was Mary's old house. And so she was sitting in a car with my friend, and I just walked up to him after that guy talked to me about being saved. And I felt something very special. He says, just go ahead and tell him you got saved. And I just walked up to him and said, hey, I got saved. Oh, yeah, good. You know, they, said, <laughs> they were doing some homework or something, you know, whatever it was, college homework. Or but, yeah, they knew what it was. But, you know, you, you're the one that has the feeling inside. It's very special to you. Keep that feeling. Let that feeling flow through you. You know, it's, it's, it very, it's very uh, uh, honored to be up here and, and, and just talk to you all about Christ and tell you what the Bible says and stuff, yeah, but I, I really feel bad. I, uh, if, if Pastor was on vacation or something, I don't know what's going to happen to Pastor, but God has his hand on Pastor. Amen. He has his hand on us. And, and as the old preachers used to say, you're not promised to walk out of here. You're not promised to get home today. But let God control your life. Wherever you are, open your hearts, open your minds. Let God flow through you as a Christian, even if it's just a smile. Let it smile. Let you express Jesus in your, to others any way you can. Because I don't know where this world's going to. And we might be just on the, the tip of the iceberg of things that are going to happen. But we got Jesus. He's going to take care of us and see us through everything we're going through. See this over here? 
they were going to take out just a little bit of carcinoma deal. It wasn't it was malignant or whatever. They're going to take out. You all see that picture. That thing's from here all the way down to here. We found a little pocket. We had to go down and cut a little bit more and stuff. So they just sliced me all the way. He says, I got, he says, I got stitches in there. He says, he says, well, we'll keep these stitches in there. It'll, it'll help you, you know, tuck in your skin over here a little bit, you know, <laughs> where you fall in here. He says, so there's those kinds that you, they, the kinds they leave inside your body. I says, what? <laughs> so, but we still want you to come on next Wednesday. Wednesday, Wednesday next, we got some stitches we do have to take out. But the rest of them, they're just going to stay in there. Oh, my goodness. Huh? Yeah. So I just put my hands in God on things like this. Trials and, tri and tribulations that help different trials we have to go through embrace embrace because you are a christian if you believe in the lord jesus christ let's go to the lord in prayer dear heavenly father we just thank you for this beautiful day once again i keep saying that but i just believe that you are the god that loved us so much that you gave us a way out And the way out was through Jesus Christ. Because you said that there wouldn't be any way that we could, that you could take all our sins away without something. We, we had to be put, if we sinned, we had to be put one place and we had to put, we were good, we had to put another place. But you saw that there's relief through Jesus Christ. That if we ask forgiveness of our sins, and believe that Jesus Christ came down from heaven and earth and stayed here and talked to us and told us about and had this Bible printed by the, the people that put the Bible together, dear Lord, the letters and stuff, that we could take this message that you left us and present it to everyone we meet. Lord, I ask today... that the people that are here in this church, dear Lord, that they look for you, they will look for you for guidance and strength in telling others about Christ and sharing their salvation with others and their story. In 1 Peter, it says, 24 and 25, all the people are like grass, and all their glory is like the flowers of the field. Its grass withers, and the flowers fall, but the word of the Lord will endure forever. Thank you, Lord, for that being endured. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen.